Hi, this is John Barber, and this is the fourth in the Garrison Files release, and we're finally getting around to releasing the last two David Ferry Files. And I'm sorry for the delay, but for the last month, I've been traveling all around the country, all the way from a fantastic JFK conference in Illinois to an even more fantastic LA Times book fair in Los Angeles. The two files we're releasing are really interesting. The first one, thankfully, is very short, but it has a very interesting affidavit in it. One of Garrison's staff is interviewing George Lardner Jr. George Lardner Jr., as some of you already know, was the CIA asset assigned by the Washington Post to destroy and dismember Oliver Stone long before he even cranked one frame of film for his terrific movie, JFK. And the reason the Garrison people were interested in him? They found out that on his own, George Lardner Jr. sought out an exclusive interview with David Ferry. It's all in that first file. But the second file is massive and unbelievably important and once again shows how thorough and in-depth Jim Garrison's investigation was. It is 328 riveting pages of testimony and documentation and evidence that indeed the CIA did murder John Kennedy. It begins for me on page 20. What happens here is that Jim Garrison, using very simple CSI detective work, simple detective work that the Warren Commission could have done and solved in one day, or any decent investigative and journalist in the media, but they never did. They ignored it, even though they knew it was there, but not Garrison. What he did starts on page 20. He took all the phone records of Shaw, Ruby, and Ferry, and tracked them down to a phone number in Illinois, in Chicago, to a phone that belonged to Lawrence V. Myers. And there you have in the Warren Commission, the day before Jack Ruby murders Lee Harvey Oswald, you have evidence that Lawrence V. Myers is chatting with him at the Cabana Motel. There's also another staggering document, affidavit, that would have put Clay Shaw in prison for 99 years, and as one of Garrison's staff said, would have made the man somebody else's bitch for a very long time. There is James Whalen on pages 44 and 45, testifying that Clay Shaw and David Ferry offered him $25,000 to murder Jim Garrison, 10 up front and 15,000 after the fact. And James Whalen says to Mr. Garrison that he indeed thought about it. Not about the money, but about the fact that his daughter had incurable polio and that Shaw and Ferry promised that the U.S. government and the CIA would supply the greatest medical help in this country to help cure his daughter. Fortunately for us in history, Mr. Whalen felt the fate of our country was more important than the fate of his daughter. Also on page 48 is an affidavit from a Chuck Rowland. Chuck Rowland was a manager of Winterland Skating Rink in Houston, Texas. And the day before the assassination, he said that David Ferry was in his rink acting very, very bizarrely. For those of you who are JFK research junkies, let me assure you that these 328 pages, which are now on my site, will be the greatest fix that you ever had. On September 5, 1981, when I interviewed Jim Garrison for three hours, at one point I asked him, I said, Sir, if you were the Attorney General of the United States right now, who would you arrest? And the first name he blurted out was Fred Lee Chrisman. Most people in the assassination community have never heard of Fred Lee Chrisman. But the next file's release, you certainly will. Till then, wish us luck.